so this episode is going to be about a, uh, a road crossing and other events uh, dealing with what we called the uh, the big black hairy thing. Hello. So, um, for about a six, maybe eight year period there in Kentucky, um, we had um, multiple run-ins and encounters with uh, what we had dubbed the, uh, the Big Black Harry thing. You know, back then, uh, we only had the two TV stations, you know, and no cable, no satellite, no cell phones. Um, uh, you know, and people made fun of people who went to the library, you know, so. <clears throat> but uh, <clears throat> back then, uh, there was no, like, Sasquatch or Bigfoot. There was, but it wasn't like it is nowadays. It was like saying that you saw a UFO um, you know back then if you say you saw a UFO you were you were crazy you know what I mean it was the propaganda and rhetoric that they had pushed into the the news and all that so that if somebody said they saw something they would be ostracized and isolated from society so nobody would take them serious you know and uh, all that all that rhetoric and propaganda is kind of uh, ran its course and you know like it's it's worn itself out kind of like a uh, a virus adapting to the antiviruses over and over again you know what I mean uh, the 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 antivirus ev eventually it, it loses its uh, effectiveness um, so that the the virus can spread again um, so that's more or less what's happened with uh, what we know is cryptids and UFOs and all that stuff um, the the original rhetoric to keep it out of public's point of view has, has worn off and now everybody you know they can say whatever they see and, and not feel so bad about it um, but as one who grew up during that time of uh, if you said certain stuff you kinda got made fun of um, you can see my apprehension of uh, why I would, I would want to talk about certain things um, but I'm doing this to help my brother's memory um, that's really why I'm doing this uh, others just might find it interesting but this is for my brother to hear you know um, so, we had had, uh, where we lived, you know, we lived down a, uh, down a road that was hardly ever, hardly ever traveled, you know, it was an old town area, uh, the town had been around for, uh, you know, probably 400 plus years, 300 years easy, um, it had been abandoned, but I mean, people been in them hills for a while, you know what I mean, um, we lived out in, in one of the old buildings from that old town that had been uh, modernized with some, some siding and tin roof. And, uh, we had about a four acre garden and, you know, we were living a country life. Um, and uh, <clears throat> we had them, uh, the, the, the first floor windows were so, f so low to the ground. Um, like if you walked up to them, your knee would be at the bottom of the windowsill. You know what I mean? I mean, the house was built so many years ago, and it, it didn't have a floor in it. So when they modernized it, you know, they built up the floor level. Um, and us being all six foot plus, man, uh, we barely fit through the front door, and uh, you kind of had to tilt your head to the side <clears throat> to stand up inside on that uh, first floor 
because they, you know, it was built without a floor. They put the floor in with the plumbing and all that, and they raised up the floor level. So you probably had a six foot six uh, ceiling inside that house on the first floor. Um, <clears throat> but the windows were also they they were low to the ground outside, and we had that uh that cheap screen you'd get in the rolls and you'd just kind of like use a, a staple gun a staple gun and you'd staple the bottom and stretch it over or staple the top and stretch it down or whatever you know and cut to fit um, so that's that is the type of screens we had on the windows you know because they were old log cabin windows with uh, like plastic siding that had been like vinyl siding boxed in um, so anyway, <clears throat> we had some, some of that cheap screen on the windows, and the first encounter we had with this thing, and we didn't even realize, you know, it was that thing at the time, was, um, uh, the screens on the bottom windows, uh, to my sister's room, she had two windows on her room, and both of the screens <clears throat> had been, like, ripped off, you know, it looked like somebody had cut them up with scissors and ripped them off. You know what I mean? Um, and it, it was weird, you know, of course. We had a lecture and who did it and who did it. And, you know, one, somebody had to be blamed. Um, you know how that goes. Uh, so, anyway, it, <clears throat> we wound up putting up new screen and all that. And um, it, it didn't happen for a little bit. And next thing you know... Um, it had happened again it was almost in the same manner you know it looked like somebody cut it up with scissors and ripped it off so uh, it was the same blame game again who did it who did it you know and so we put the screen back over the window you know and that third time it happened we started we had noticed excuse me I can't remember who pointed it out I believe it was mom um, but somebody had pointed it out because my mom and my sister uh, their cycles were lined up and I guess by the third time of all this uh, drama and stress um, occurring while my mom's cycle was occurring she pointed out the fact that these screens are being ripped off during her uh, her menstrual cycle um, which of course that lined up with my sisters and um so of course like my dad got all like uppity about that like it, he took it on another level of like offensiveness you know what i mean um and he wound up we put the screens back up and it was within that same like the new screens hadn't been ripped off and we were all coming home one evening um i'd gotten off <clears throat> uh, where I worked I had done the closing shift so we were getting home at like 12:30, one ish in the morning man and it was like <clears throat> it was like me my older brother um, my sister and two family friends and my dad was driving um, and the uh, the two family friends uh, it was common for them to come over on the weekends and hang out and this was like a Friday or a Saturday. I can't remember which. But it was one of those two days. <clears throat> and uh, the road we lived on had just been uh, chipped and sealed. Uh, that's when they put down like a, a layer of tar and then this like cracked rock gravel over the top of it. And they just leave it there to be absorbed into the tar. Uh, so... Um, and and the way it rolls is you come in you turn in and it goes downhill and makes like a s turn and then it goes over a little pop hill and then it does like a a sharp turn to the right and <clears throat> i mean the speed on the road is already slow uh if if you were going 30 miles an hour on that road you you'd probably slip off in some of the turns you know you'd go off road it, the tires would not be able to keep you on the road um, because those roads were not made with uh, cars in mind they were made with like a horse in mind you know originally um, so 
it was in it was in that sharp turn I was talking about to the right. Uh, Dad was only doing maybe 15, you know, 10 to 15 tops, because it was kind of a hairpin turn anyway. It, it was a sharp turn to the right, a good 90 degrees, maybe even a hundred degree turn, you know. Um, but he was doing 10, 15 miles an hour, and we're all talking and everything, and. You know, so the headlights, he had just started going into the turn, and uh, <clears throat> the headlights started sweeping across, and you saw right there to the left of the road was this just massive, upright standing uh, beast of a thing. And <clears throat> so Dad, he hit the brakes, and anybody who wasn't looking forward at that moment everybody's now looking forward you know but he was only doing like 10 so we barely screeched to a halt you know it, it took us like less than five feet to stop maybe 10 foot tops and now we're all sitting there looking at this thing and uh even when it first came into the headlights i was i was sitting what they call uh, a female dog uh, a bee with an itch uh, i was sitting in between the driver and passenger on a five gallon bucket and uh so i'm looking forward you know talking to dad and and my older brother in the passenger seat and um it comes in the view and it's just it's like walking this whole time and you know he hits the brakes and we all like come to a screech and stop and we're all sitting there looking at it and for like the first like two steps uh it stepped up onto the road and then it took a second step and the second step was all the way across the road and the third step was all the way up this little hill on the right um, and like the fourth step was right over the barbed wire fence and it took those four steps I bet it was moving 20 miles an hour 15 mile, 15 to 25 miles an hour easy it it was walking at a pace equal to a like a, a lineback football player full sprint you know it was just walking that fast and like I said it took two steps and was across the road and within two more steps it had walk it was up a hill and across the barbed wire fence and um, <clears throat> so when it gets to the the other side of the road we start like we start smacking each other like like we came alive with like uh 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 you know and we're smacking each other and before it got across the fence we started saying big black hairy thing like we realize i don't know who said it first i can't tell you that but somebody said that out loud and it was like a perfect visual representation with what we just saw you know for what we just saw so this thing was uh easily eight feet to ten feet tall um i would compare it to like a, a basketball goal um it, it could probably uh almost hit its head on the basketball either either the net or the backboard if not the rim itself but it could easily hit its head on the net that's how tall it was um, and I think that's why it walked so fast is because of how tall it was um, it had enormous features um, you know wide like a bodybuilders type shoulders uh, its arms kind of moved in opposite you know concurrence with its legs um, but <clears throat> trying trying to describe how it walked <clears throat> is not as an important of a detail is as to me this thing moved once again like a shadow um, I know it was in our headlights and it had a shadow but <clears throat> that's not what I mean I mean the way the legs I say it walked but um, the way the legs and arms moved was uh it, it just 
it can't be described as the way a normal thing would move. It, it had this flow to it, especially when it, it went up that hill and over the fence. It was so fluid. It was so fluid. Um, like it had, it had done it a thousand times. It was just muscle memory to it. Like we were not even there. You know what I mean? Um, and uh, that barbed wire fence, um, that that was a three-tier, if not a four-tier barbed wire fence at the top of that hill. And that hill um, was easily, the height of that hill was equivalent to the van that we were in. We were in like a 65 bug-eyed van. So, I mean, the height of that hill was easily six foot. And it, it went up that hill in one step, you know. And also, I mean, from the road to that fence was a good 10 feet, easily 10 feet uphill. Um, and the hill was maybe a 30 degree angle, 35 degree angle. Um, it was a it was a decent hill, you know. And he he took that all in like a motionless step, like effortless effortlessly just right up that hill and over the fence all in the same fluid motion from the left until it was across that fence <clears throat> it just moved like a shadow like um, somebody moved light and darkness steadily right in front of you um, whereas like a human like if we were walking you would see our bob and our, our strut and all those all those different an antics that go into a human walking this had none of that it was just flow it, it was like fluid you know and fast and uh uh, everybody started saying, yeah, yeah, big black hairy thing, big black, and, you know, we all started saying it, and we're smacking each other, and we're like, what the hell, you dude, you know, and all this stuff, and, like, dad lays on the horn and punches the gas pedal, and we just peel out, you know, and everybody's holding on, like, whoa, and he's like, we're getting the hell out of here, you know, and, like, get the hell out of here, man, get the hell, and, I mean, he's got, he's got five teenagers, more or less, you know, upper teenagers, 20s, in his van so we're all like you know being teenagers and loud and everything and we get to the house the house wasn't no more than a, maybe a mile from there and uh, he pulls in and we're all like oh my god I can't believe what we just seen you know and we're all going on about what we seen and while while we're doing that dad done got out and went inside and grabbed his shotgun and came outside and mom's like what what's going on what's going on so mom follows him outside and we're all standing there and he holds the shotgun up and just he unloads all seven shots just bow 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 shooting up into the air and he's yelling don't you ever come around here and he's like dad was uh quite upset at what he saw and like it didn't dawn on me uh you know but he he put two and two together instantly in that in that moment when he saw what he saw meanwhile us kids are like well, us teenagers, young adults, are sitting there being like totally amazed and enthralled by it and all this. But Dad done figured out that's what's been ripping the screens off of our house. So he got to our house as fast as he could and got the, the loudest gun he could find and shot it off in the direction where he saw that thing heading towards. And that's the direction he was yelling at. Um, he took it personal, and he, he was letting that thing know, don't come around our house no more, you know. And um, he actually, now get this, I mean, as a, as a male territorial thing, um, he had us actually going outside. He said that we can go outside to any one of the trees or behind the shed, and, you know, we could, we could do our, our business there, you know, mark our territory, he said, you know. Um, so he had, uh, he had all his sons, you know, not every time, but we, <laughs> he had the males marking the territory of that house, dude. And, um, 
the next month had come around and that month nothing happened but the following month I believe it was mom in the kitchen um, was washing dishes and this thing had pressed like its face I forget who it was it was my mom or my sister I believe it was my mom but this thing pressed its face against the screen and no sooner than she screamed like it pulled away and everybody was like what's going on in the house and then you know dad got the gun and we all went outside and when we did uh, it had ripped the screen off the kitchen it was the first time that any screen other than the ones around my sister's bedroom <clears throat> had been ripped off and this was the kitchen screen and I mean uh, you know once again dad unloaded in the into the air you know you stay the hell away from my my family you stay the hell away from my house you know and he came back in he reloaded it and he went back out and shot it again dude um, just shooting off into the air you know um, now what's strange about this is um, Abel um, was tied up out back and we had another dog out front and if anything Abel should have been he should have known he should have known the big black hairy thing was at the kitchen because he he was no more than maybe uh, I'm wanting to say not even 10 feet 20 feet tops from the kitchen window uh, he was right there you know and he was not barking at whatever this big black hairy thing is uh, I don't know if like they had a like a talk prior to it I don't know the situation I don't know how whatever that was was able to stand by my stand by my dog without him barking at it like um, that didn't make any sense at all um, so that was the <clears throat> the screens and that was the road encounter so <clears throat> knowing this things out there you know being the kid I am I, I wanted to know you know what is it where's it going what's it eat uh, what's it do you know all those questions I wanted to know uh, and uh, I'll let you guys know about those in a in another episode and um, so this part here uh, I'm working on getting my patreon up and going there there's a whole bunch of different stuff to learn when it comes to uh, doing all this stuff man and um, you know I still work for a living so you gotta bear with me and I've got a learning curve but I, I usually am a fast learner uh, but I only have so much time per day and um, yeah I'm gonna or right, I'm working on getting the patreon up and going and uh, as part of that um, I'm gonna show you the patreon members names and they are right here I just wanted to say thanks for watching hope you enjoyed